So what do allegations of intelligence manipulation mean for the anti-ISIS mission and for the men and women trying to carry it out? Joining me right now with his reaction is Mike Baker, former CIA covert operations officer and president of Diligence, a global intelligence and security firm. He joins me right now from Boise, Idaho. Mike, thanks so much for joining me. Sure, thank you. What do you make of these, these bombshell reports about the intelligence being cooked up in regard to ISIS? Well, I mean, it's very serious. And obviously, we have seen this in, in recent past, as, as you would refer to, with the idea that uh, the previous administration had handpicked uh, portions of intelligence that was being delivered from the field in relation to the issue of weapons of mass destruction uh, leading up to the, uh, the effort in, in, in Iraq. So this is not something that's new. We don't want to paint this as something that's unique to this uh, current administration. Uh, it's only natural, I will say this much, it's only natural that the further you get away from the street, from where you actually collect the raw intelligence, whether that's from uh, a, a, a human source, whether it's from SIGINT, uh, signals intelligence, whether it's from our liaison partners, the further you get away from that collection of raw intelligence and that information starts getting combined with other bits and moving through the editorial process, the more likely it is that there's a subjective element to what rises to the top, what becomes a priority within that intelligence. So that is, that's just the way the world works, and that's expected. But the really disconcerting part here uh, of, of the report uh, about this is that if our analysts, whether they're in the Defense Intelligence Agency or in CENTCOM or in the CIA or anywhere else, if our analysts uh, start to feel as if they can't give their unvarnished, 100% uh, truthful assessment, if they feel somehow that they are being, uh, you know, pushed or steered or threatened or cajoled into a different direction, then it essentially makes the job of the analyst worthless because that is their primary function, an unvarnished assessment, their unvarnished assessment of all that raw intelligence that comes into them every day from various places. It seems like this could be a huge issue in the presidential campaign, but if you look at the front runners, you look at Hillary Clinton, she comes from the administration that is responsible for this. They're in charge when all this was going down. You look at the Republican side, Donald Trump is the front runner. And I believe the only military experience he has is he briefly served in the KISS Army in the late 1970s. Do you think that this issue is going to be a big deal or are they just going to let it blow by because it's not their strong suit? Yeah, well, I, mean, I also was a member of the KISS Army. I should confess <laughs> that right off the bat. Uh, but, you know, this, this is, it was a major uh, deal. This became a huge issue, um, you know, following the issue of WMD in Iraq and, and, and what that led to. And, and so there's nothing to lead us to believe that this should be less of an issue. I mean, if it's, you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So unless there's some effort to try to squash this because it's, it's not, you know, politically palatable for the, for, for the current administration, it, it is a major issue, and I suspect it will become uh, a, a sort of a political football as we, as we get closer to the 2016 election, depending on how this, this investigation comes out. And we, we're now seeing an investigation starting to ramp up in, in, in Washington. I would argue that Capitol Hill is where investigations go to die, so I don't think we'll see much coming out of this as a result. So, Mike, Hillary Clinton is, of course, as we mentioned, the Democratic frontrunner. And she's having some trouble with the polls right now. I think uh, Jared from Subway has higher approval ratings than Hillary Clinton. She's down in the first two states. And one of the big problems that voters have with her is the trust issue. If she comes from this administration that is cooking the books on a very important issue like ISIS, does this cut to her Achilles heel? Is this a, a huge problem for her if this becomes a big deal? Yeah, sure. Any, any, any further uh, allegations coming out of this current administration, in which she was such an important part for a long time, uh, that talk about a lack of transparency, that talk about a, a failure to report the truth, that talk about obfuscation. Yeah, of course, that, that is just another problem for her uh, and continues to keep her away from talking about what she would prefer to discuss. Uh, so, but again, I, I think we want to be careful in, in pointing out that uh, you know, this is not the first time we've seen this. So I, 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 uh, to be fair, I don't want to say that this 
process, this problem that we've seen uh, or we're seeing right now with the intel community is limited to this current administration. There is, there is history of this, and not just the previous administration, but every administration, you could argue, has at one time or another uh, used uh, the, the intel coming from the community, used the analysis for their own particular purposes to drive their own particular narrative. Uh, the problem that we're facing now is, is that we, at this stage, good God, we should know better. I mean, it hasn't been that long since, uh, you know, the intel community took such a beating over the WMD issue and, and the, the way that that administration utilized the information. So we, you know, you'd like to think that we learn from recent history. It doesn't appear that we are. Are you surprised that this ISIS story isn't a bigger deal? Because it seems to me like if this was a Republican administration, if this was in the 19 or uh, 2000s or maybe the 1980s, this would be on the front page of every newspaper in the country, and it would be the lead story on the network newscasts. It's getting play. We're talking about it. They're talking about it other places. Right. Different newspapers are writing about it. But it's not the front and center story. It's not, it's not the issue. It's not the, the A block everywhere. Does that surprise you? Right. No. It doesn't surprise me. I think there's two factors here. One is just the general tendency of, of much of the media to want to uh, fall in lockstep with the current administration to support the Obama administration and not to find, you know, reasons to go after it. Um, and I think part of it is also we're just the general population is just fatigued. They're just tired. They're tired of the war on terror. They're tired of thinking about Iraq, of, of Afghanistan, of Syria. Um, and it just has, has worn them down. So, you know, unfortunately, the fact that that we're tired of it doesn't mean anything because I tell you who's not tired of, of this is ISIS and is Al Qaeda uh, and uh, AQAP and Al Nusra. Uh, they're not tired of it at all. They feel an, an enormous uh, resurgence. And quite frankly, the uh, Islamic fundamentalists haven't had this sort of opportunity uh, ever. And so I think we better get on the giddy up. And if, we're, if we hope that we can retreat from the leadership role in this whole effort, if we hope that somehow there's going to be a happy day when our Arab allies are going to take the lead in the fight, uh, it's never going to happen. If we want to seriously defeat and destroy the Islamic State and all the awful horror that they represent, then we're going to have to get at the front edge of the spear. There's no other way around it. Tough words. Mike, always a pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us. Sure. Thank you.